Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a SIP trunk uh, to a fast track uh, SIP trunk. Um, so first you're going to want to go to your line. And this SIP trunk I already have created, so I'm just going to recap everything that we've done. Uh, we're going to leave the ITSP domain blank. We're going to put in the SIP gateway. Uh, uh, well, uh, fast track doesn't uh, register. Um, but they uh, receive and and uh, transmit SIP calls through their gateway. So you're going to want to put the SIP gateway in the ITSP proxy address. Um, jump over to your SIP credentials. And this is very important. Down here in the bottom where this little uh, radial button is, it says uh, registration required. You're going to want to uncheck that because registration is not required. Um, username authentication name password can be anything it doesn't matter they don't use uh, username and password uh, to register they don't use registration also um, contact you're going to want to set as the, your SIP gateway uh, so then jump back over to your SIP URI and then You're going to want to set uh, your local URI to use internal data, contact use internal data, display name use internal data, and uh, registration. You're just going to want to select uh, that that SIP credential that you created in the other tab. Incoming group is going to be 17. Outgoing group is going to be 17. Hit OK. And they're both right there, just one. Um, then you're going to want to create uh, an IP route. You're going to want to create two IP routes, and this is where it's a little different than uh, uh, the Clear Network's SIP trunk. So under here, you're going to want to create a IP route um, specifically for the SIP gateway and its network, and you're going to want to create an IP route for, um, I guess, well, our RTSP traffic is going to come from this address, so you're going to want to create a route for that. Hit OK. Um, I'm going to jump over to the LAN settings for a second. This is the IP address that's in that subnet. We're setting SIP trunks to enable. And then this is another uh, key piece here. Go to your ARS table. See, I've got a fast track ARS table in here. Notice how I have this uh, parentheses at the IP address of the uh, SIP gateway, end parentheses. This has to be in there, otherwise their SIP gateway isn't understanding uh, what the packets, where they're coming from. Go ahead and save that. I'm going to actually delete this test one that I was using. And I'm going to jump over here to uh, System Status and uh, go to Trunks. Go to your line 17, which is your SIP trunk. Notice that it says uh, Peer Domain is SIP 209.203.149.177. Go ahead and just hit Ping just to make sure that our uh, connectivity is there uh, sent three lost zero so it is pinging correctly that's good jump over to registration notice how it has no status no retry time it's actually not registering just when a call comes in or when a call goes out uh, is when it's initiated let's see how notice how these are all in idle um, I'm gonna jump back to the uh, manager software for a second you're gonna want uh, an incoming call route obviously and uh, just so you know, this DID, any DID coming into the system through a fast track SIP trunk has to have a, a place set, I guess you, you can call it. So if, uh, if you want everyone's outbound caller ID, so I'm just going to go to Shed for a second, Shed Sales User. I'm going to go over to the SIP tab. See where the SIP name is, it says uh, 9703994489. So Fast Track is sending us a DID with this uh, caller ID. If this caller ID does not exist on any one of these users, 
that call will not route in, even though you have an incoming call route. So what we do in this case, um, if you wanted like your uh, outbound caller ID to reflect their main number, just go ahead and change that. 874 7070. Okay. Now we're just going to create some dummy users here. Just right click anywhere in the user field there, hit new. And we're just going to call it SIP001. We're not going to give it an extension. SIP001. But we're going to jump over here to the SIP tab and we're going to give it that we're going to give it that caller ID. So 970-399-4489. Okay. And now that uh, DID will ring into the system. Without this user being there, it will not. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks.